Welcome to Master and Apprentice. Today, we're gonna to be making a great sword from Monster Hunter World. This is Marcus Laporte. For the last 17 years, Marcus has been working in the film industry as a production designer, art director, and prop fabricator. And this is Adam Ellis, a novice cosplayer and a systems administrator for Rooster Teeth, the production company we work for. We're gonna show you what it takes to make professional level props from your favorite movies and video games. And teach you the tricks the pros use that you can do at home. This is Master and Apprentice. Marcus, uh, I picked a great sword, primarily because great swords are the most fun weapons to use in video games, at least for my personal tastes. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to pick a big great sword, and I saw Monster Hunter World's trailer, and I saw this thing, and I thought, that's a great great sword. So in Monster Hunter, you get weapons and armor by crafting them from items you find in the world. So our sword is made up of bone, it's made up of teeth, it has big hunks of metal on it, and it is huge. The idea is that if the sword wasn't bigger than you, then it wasn't good enough. <laughs> It's pretty massive. It's got combination materials in here, yeah. which I feel like is, is, is gonna be challenging. But really, it's just about texturizing and, and adding texture to the existing material. So I'm rating this build as an eight out of 10 because of the size, the sculpting difficulty, and the added challenge of trying to keep weight to a minimum. The sword is broken down into three major parts, the blade, the teeth, and the hilt. So the first step in this build is to make a sketch. We used Photoshop to scale a screenshot at about seven and a half feet when we printed it out on standard printer paper. So next up is sculpting, molding, and casting all these monster teeth. We're gonna need some sculpting tools, cups, buckets, and stir sticks, some clay, some mold-making silicone, casting plastic, and two-part expansion foam. So the next up is wood sculpting and texturing. You're gonna need a saw, wood gouges, and some rotary tool bits. The bulk of this piece is made out of a giant block of balsa wood. So for the hilt, guard, and pommel fabrication, we're gonna be using saws, drills, and sanders, some utility blades, a heat gun, and of course adhesives. We're gonna be using a shovel handle, some mechanical PVC sheets, scrap leather, and gold twine. And finally, we have painting and weathering. You're gonna need some small paintbrushes, and a spray bottle, some spray paints, and acrylic paints. All right, so start by sculpting. These teeth are gonna be made out of a plastiline clay. This stuff is sulfur free. It's appropriate for mold making materials. Silicone sometimes will not harden if set up against something that has high sulfur content. We're gonna kind of size this clay to the size of the template here. Adam, you're looking pretty good. I think the next step is gonna to be to take this little wire brush. It's real small. We're just gonna give a texture. The idea is we're trying to like scratch and etch this tooth in a way that looks like typical striations or cracks that you'd see on a big tooth. It's important to wipe down the clay with some denatured alcohol so that we can turn our rough details into a nice smooth finish. See how we have squished down all this little clay here? Yep. And now we want to push it back in to form a seal. And we're going to have to sculpt six more of these. So now we're ready to put a cup around this and we can pour some silicone. Awesome. We're going to mix part A and B together. So this particular two-part silicone is a 50-50 mix by weight or volume, but we're gonna use a digital scale as it tends to be slightly more accurate. Can you see how I'm exposing blue material? Yeah, yeah. That's how you can tell, like, here's a color-coded proof that if you don't scrape the edges, you're going to end up with uncatalyzed silicone that goes into your mold. Looks great. All right, we'll let the stuff dry, come back in an hour or so, and we'll cast the material in it. So we're using balsa wood here basically because it's really lightweight sculpting material. It's soft, it's easy to sculpt into, and it's, it's accessible. So we traced our template onto the balsa wood, and we're gonna use our reciprocating saw to get rough cuts, and then we're gonna run it over to the band saw to clean up those lines a bit. So if you don't have a reciprocating saw, a hand saw would work pretty good for these rough cuts. Again, we're just gonna try not to get the blade bound up. If you feel like you're you know, biting off too much, then just go ahead and work yourself out of the piece itself. All right. It's a little bit lighter now, man. We have most of this cut out. We have a hole still to do, mm -hmm. but um, I think our, our mold might be set up. Yeah, you wanna check the silicone and find out? See if you can grab that thing. You can do it. So Marcus, we have two different things that we're gonna pour into this, and you're explaining <laughs> to me that one will be the hard outer coating, and then one is the soft inside. Well, it's actually not soft, it's, okay. just, uh, it's just fluffy. One is a two-part plastic. We put a part A and a part B together, it gives us a hard shell of plastic. Looks like a mango drink. Mm-hmm, it does. Looks like orange juice <laughs> and like smoothie. <laughs> I'm gonna pour it in, we're gonna do this little move, which is called rotational casting where you get all your plastic on all the little edges, but it's hollow. At some point, it's going to set up, 
We've got this other material. So this is a rigid foam. Cool part about this foam is when we mix it together, it expands probably eight to 10 times its normal size, but it's lightweight. So if you don't have this particular two-part rigid foam at home, you could easily use a spray can foam that's found at a hardware store. There is an exothermic reaction. It's gonna heat up, it's gonna get really hot. It might even spit off some gas. You might hear little pops and cracks. So we're ready to pull this thing out? I think so. We Let's, just, uh, you want me to just try to give this thing a pull? Yeah. And there it is. Very good. I'm really impressed with this, dude. So this will leave us with a shell of solid plastic around a lightweight foam. Right now, we're transferring the template details onto the balsa wood. And then from here, we're going to start actually sculpting this thing. We want to determine the center point of this block. And so we have a three inch block of wood. We're at an inch and a half. We're going to scribe a line all the way down this run so that when we come back to do excavation, we know we have to connect this line to that line. And that's going to give us the bevel on this blade. So it's always a good idea to test out your tools on a scrap piece of wood to see how it responds. We had really good luck removing the bulk of the material using an angle grinder with a chainsaw blade attachment. We also used some die grinders, some chisels, and some wood gouges. The rule of thumb here is that if you're using a tool that's working for you, then that's all that really matters. If you're taking off material and it looks good, that's all you really need. I'm gonna go maybe, I don't know, about a half inch down. Let's see, now I need a flat chisel. The trick here is to work slow, man. If you work fast here, you're gonna blow it. If you really did make a nice, clean cut there and there's a deep wall, it's going to pop right off. Yeah, that's awesome. And you should be able to kind of sand in here. Then from here, you can start to be more aggressive with the toolage. This is a die grinder. It's got a, a burr bit that's on here. Mm -hmm. This is your favorite tool up here? It's my favorite tool, dude. It, the bit just looks so cool, and it works so good. To finish up the bone texture, we used a pneumatic needle scaler, which basically shoots out a bunch of random needles and adds little pock marks to our bone. We have one last texture, and that is the, the hammered metal look, and we have a hammer. So I think it's more about a lot of light touches. Yeah, no, you're in the neighborhood, man. That's, that's pretty much the technique, man. That's it. All right, man. Yeah, all right. Had, uh, well, <laughs> it's no. early morning. We had a pretty eventful, long evening. Yeah. Uh, this looks insane, dude. I'm seeing the shape here. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. So the last sculpting step went really well. I feel like I learned a ton. And the next step is epoxying it, which will basically lay a hard coat over it. Sort of a key step, because it, it adds some structure to it, but it also allows us to paint it properly. Try to like lift up in some of the holes in the deep spots. We don't want this stuff pooling up. Because the shop is so cold today, we're using a heat gun to warm up the epoxy to make sure it cures. So right now we've decided where our center hole is for our handle. He's gonna drill the hole because he's a lot more skilled and I don't wanna screw this one up. This is one of the ones you really can't come back from. So Marcus has drilled the starter hole with a Forzner bit, but the Forzner bit's only about three inches long, so he's brought in this monstrosity to drill the rest of the way. Oh, it's the, uh... oh that's great. We're backfilling this with a little bit of epoxy resin. We're going to squeeze this shovel handle down in there, and hopefully we'll get enough to squeeze out. OK, that's great. This is our octagonal piece. I'm using a drill press with a Forzner bit to core out the center. After that, I'm taking it right over the table saw, cutting it at a 45-degree angle. That way, it ends up like a perfect octagon. So we're gluing these sheets of mechanical PVC together, and then we're bending them to shape with a heat gun. This is drying. What are we doing now? We're going to go do the, the drill press lathe thing? Yes. Is there any reason we're not using a regular lathe? Because we don't have one. 
Okay. We have taken a chunk of balsa wood. There's a hole running down the center. And we have two sets of nuts and washers keeping this nice and tight. And we're gonna use the same rotary tool we've been using. Instead of pushing into it quickly, you have to go in real slow. Okay, can Just sort of feather it in. We can go back on and you can use just a piece of sandpaper. You want this thing sweeping away from you. Here's our pommel. I think it looks, I think it looks pretty rad, man. We can put this on the end and then mm. we're, we're really close. So we're using a nice cosplay trick by sticking plastic googly eyes in the shallow holes we drilled out with a Forstner bit. They look silly now, but once we paint over them, they'll look just like metal. The final piece that we didn't even talk about is, is a 3D printed piece. This could easily be hand sculpted. There are other options to 3D printing. This is just happens to be the one we took. Kind of like what's going on here. It already kind of feels like bone a little bit but it needs to be a little more uniform and clearly more white. So we're gonna use an off-white spray paint to just sort of veil in a little bit of additional paint to kind of get this into a better color range. We base coated the metal part black, and now we're going over with some rubber buff uh, pewter, which is a metallized wax paint. We want the lower spots to stay darker, but get the lighter parts still like a silvery color. The playing cards are just an easy waterproof palette material that I can put a little paint on there, you can move it around, you can mix things up. So we're using a mixture of acrylic paint and water here as a wash technique. And the idea is that you lay this stuff on and you wipe it off. We know that if we use raw paint, it's going to be way too much. The diluted paint is gonna give us a much more subtle shade. And finally, we're adding leather to our wooden broom handle and wrapping it in gold twine as our last detail. Well, Marcus, this, this turned out to be a great sword. I absolutely sword. love it, man. The fact that it's all one piece like makes it look like it's tied together, it's great. The broom handle looks really nice with the leather. How we were able to get this mechanical PVC to sort of bend and curve, mm -hmm. and the epoxy we applied really gave it a nice metallic sort of feel. I'm glad we did seven different teeth. Each of these has their own little individual curves. I think they all look great. Nice and light. Yeah, I mean, this thing only weighs like 15 pounds, which is way lighter than we thought. So I'm really glad we took the measures we did to save on the weight. It's been a really long couple days, so what do you say? <laughs> Go take the sword and get out of here. All right, let's do it. Ooh, ah, I told you this thing was too big. <laughs> what good's a great sword if you can't swing it? Thanks for watching Master and Apprentice. Whether you guys are making a giant sword or anything else, please let us know and show us. And if you guys want to see us make anything else, tell us in the comments. We'll see you guys next time.